Me now in studio are Dr. Amir Khnifas, head of the Israeli Druze Center, and Jeremy Sultan, advisor to the New Right Party and political strategist. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me for this. Uh, Dr. Khnifas, what would be your hope that changes in this election campaign? What is most important to you to well, see Well, obviously, shift? what I would like to see is a way that we have, uh, we wake up on, t on Tuesday with a new government, with a central left uh, wing uh, p political parties that uh, form a new government that obviously uh, go out for a new policy for Israel, for the people of Israel, and in terms of our relationship with the neighboring countries in this area. And I do believe it's a really good chance to have this opportunity, and I do believe that uh, we could have such a government on Tuesday with Benny Gantz as uh, the new prime minister in coalition with the Labour Party, and uh, somehow uh, uh, I will say members of Knesset also from other parties who, that support this kind of government. Was the nationality bill and the nationality law really a moment of shift for you in terms of politics on who to vote for in the future? Of course, Benny Gantz, one of the main things in his campaign was his opposition to yes. the nationality law. Yes, but obviously when you say that we have an opposition to, uh, to Benjamin Netanyahu's policy, it it doesn't mean that you don't also a strategy or a policy that you want to implement. It means that we oppose what he has in that sense that we almost have different policy towards any other issues that facing the Israel nowadays in terms of its society, its economics and its politics. And that's where we want to take these states. We want really to support the courts. We want to give Israel as, can maintain Israel as a democratic state, besides its being as a Jewish state, and all these issues where we believe that Netanyahu's government had taken it to the wrong side through the last years. Jeremy, I would guess you're not hoping for a center-left government on Tuesday. No, not at all. <laughs> and the good news that I can tell you is that um, well, we can't talk about internal polls, but I can say that I'm optimistic that the chances of a right-wing government are definitely within reach, certainly within what we would call the margin of error. So I, I do think that as we see this trend continue, which already started back last week, of the overall voter, voter turnout coming uh, up, but especially increasing among the right-wing population, I think that we're getting closer to being able to finally put an end to this mess. The way that I see it, it's either a Netanyahu government or it's a fourth election. The chances that Gantz is going to be able to form a government with TB and Lieberman together, it's just not happening, let's be honest. Do you think, Jeremy, though, that uh, the um, claims and concerns, like from Dr. Khnifas, have been answered by the Likud, that despite years of maybe people being disappointed by certain policies, maybe this time, I mean, we saw the prime minister this uh, round of elections, the third one, approaching the Arab uh, minorities in Israel? Well, obviously, I can't speak for Likud because I'm not the Likud spokesman. But when it comes to the right wing bloc, I, I do think that there's a lot of stuff that is being done. I can talk about for myself in my position working on the planning and building committee of the Harel Regional Council. I've probably approved more homes uh, for the non-Jewish, uh, specifically the Arab population, for instance, in Abu Ghosh, than my predecessor, who was from the Merits Party in the center left. So, so this idea that only the center left government can take care of their population is something that I just don't agree with. And if also you look at some of the areas within district government, regional government, local government, we see that a lot of times it's actually the right wing that is able to go ahead and really pave new bridges and new roads for the Arab sector and the Arab community. So I, I think overall, if we're looking at the specific areas that, that we were talking about beforehand of the nationality bill or some of these other pieces of legislation that have really not changed the lives of the Arab population on the ground, that it's great for a soundbite, it's great for a, a speech to try to rally the troops behind, but it's not anything that actually changes the life of your Arab citizen or makes his life better. Yeah, but never thought that we have to remember also that your party has also responsibility in all the racist and extremist laws that this government or the last government has act against all these minorities, including the Druze community that I come from and that we're talking about the nation state law that in a way 
hurt, and you know that very well, those actually, those who actually perceive themselves as part of the Israeli so. society, even before its establishment. And unfortunately, and you know that very well, that your party haven't done anything for changing this situation. So uh, I'll first of all disagree. You, you decided to label a lot of these, these, these pieces of legislation as racist. Uh, I think that's your own subjective feeling. And again, I'm not one to go ahead and tell you how you should feel, but I think if you objectively look at what the pieces of legislation actually say, for instance, the nationality bill, which definitely goes ahead and gives a lot of place. Again, it doesn't go as far as you would like or a lot of other members of your community would like, but it definitely does go ahead and bring in a lot of aspects into the bill to recognize the, the place of people who are not Jewish within a Jewish and democratic state. But, you know, we are in a democracy, and the majority of Israelis are Jews, and this is a Jewish state. That was the state that was established in 1948. That was the UN vote that decided that we should have a Jewish state. This is As a Jewish uh, and democratic so, so again, and I agree with you, the democratic aspect is integral, and that's why the first 10 basic laws that we dealt with when we uh, started founding this country up until we passed the nationality law dealt with the institutional aspects as well as afterwards dealing with the human rights aspects with the two 1992 basic laws that were passed. So now we need yeah, to talk about have, the character you know, of the state, and that's what that you do when you're writing a, a constitution, you, we which is what more, basic laws are. We ha you have more than a year since you have the nation law. But well, we've and, had elections, so you can't, that's you not fair to say that in the last year there's been no enough changes to meet what you missed in that law, in different laws, if you have such an intention. But obviously, your party Again, didn't have any intention I'm like telling that. you for, my, for myself, I value all citizens of the state of Israel, whether they're Jewish or not Jewish. Within our party, we have a Jews chapter. Uh, it's not that we are an exclusively Jewish party or that when I'm going ahead and I'm approving plans, I exclusively only choose Jewish projects. So to try to go ahead and throw that on myself, on my party, or on the right uh, as a whole is just something that I have to dismiss. But let's look at the